Joining me right now, it's the champ champ, Martin Nguyen. Man, it's uh, incredible what you have done in the last 12 months fighting for one championship. You know, you started with Edward Kelly last November. Now you end the year, basically. I don't know what to say. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> it's, all, it's all hard work and dedication, man. And if I don't get fighter of the year after that, man, I don't know what the hell's going to go on. Uh, seriously, if you don't get fighter of the year, there's nobody else out there that's doing what you're doing. So, you know, you're saying that it's hard work and dedication, but what else, you know, you know, for the people that are listening, what else do you need to uh, get to the point where you're at right now in your career? Um, bro, you just need belief, eh? Um, if you don't believe in yourself, if you don't believe that you, you can do it, then, yeah, it's not for you, man. But it's it's the hard work and dedication that you put into this sport. Um, all the hard work pays off, eh? All right, let's uh, get into the fight. You know, a couple of days ago, it's still probably in your veins, you know, like running through. Um, when you stepped into the cage, I know you respect Edward a lot. You guys, you know, like even after you knocked him out, you tried to help him. And why did you step in there, you know, after you knocked him out and tried to help him? Oh, man, it's just, it was a hard um, pill to swallow, man. Edward's a good friend of mine. Um, we spent, as I said, time together in LA, and it's just that emotional connection that we have with, with each other. Um, although we did put our friendship aside when it came into this fight, it was martial artists versus martial artists. Don't get me wrong. If I if they if one had offered the fight against Edward without the title, I wouldn't have taken it. I only took the fight because it was a once in a lifetime opportunity and it was a chance to make history. Um, and winning that belt, man, it, it's it sets up platform not only for me but for my family, you know. So how does that it was feel? The, yeah, how does it feel like etching your name into the history books? You know, not just for one championship, but for MMA in general, because there's not many guys out there that are holding two belts at the, you know, at the same time. You know, you have Conor McGregor, who did have it for a little while. So what's the future? Or before I get into that question, um, how does it feel? <laughs> you know? How does it feel? Oh, bro. Nah, honestly, man, it feels, it feels amazing. It's every fighter's dream, <clears throat> not only to win a world title, but let alone two. So, um, look, I, I'm, I'm in this spot to inspire. I'm in this spot to make history. Um, the money and the fame, it comes with the sport. But in terms of inspiring other people, that's the main objective. Um, it's just all about being a martial artist at the end of the day. And um, in terms of records and breaking records, um, man, I'm still on a mission. So, um, it all ain't over yet. <laughs> Um, you know, you got, you started this year as, you know, a contender in the featherweight division. You won the title three months ago, three months ago, you won the featherweight title. Now you're a double champ. You're, you know, you're the champion in the lightweight division. Also, how do you stay grounded? You know, you seen Conor McGregor nowadays. He's out there looking like he's on drugs or something. What's going on? You know, like, how do you Man, stay grounded? That, guy, that guy's whack. <laughs> the guy's whack off his head. I think the money got to him. Um, no, I get the I get emotional support. I get um, support not only from my family and my wife. I get support from my coaches and one of C staff. Um, it's just it's just you know, as I said, we're not going to be in this sport forever. And leaving your legacy um, behind for everyone to remember. No one wants to remember like, some guy like Conor McGregor acting the way he is in Bellator. You know, they want to remember him as a true champion. Um, and I mean, the way he's going at the moment, man, I don't, I don't think he's going to be in the sport much longer. You know, I think he's trying to either get publicity or I, I, I don't know, but I, whoever goes to a sport, no, no, hits a ref, let alone makes noise for themselves. I, I can't answer that, but I'm in this sport, um, man, purely for legacy. So you're more of spreading the positivity of the sport instead of going around and acting wild and, you know, and crazy basically because even of even him so. he has a child he's you know he has a a wife or i think girlfriend or whatever and you know you have two children of your you know yourself don't you think three, that would, three children <laughs> oh once three yeah. children oh i thought yeah, you had only three, two bro. children oh you have three children that's insane yeah. right like so i guess yeah, when bro. you do go home 
you you go back to reality, right? And that keeps you 100%, in check. Man. It keeps me grounded, man. Like, I only want the best for my family. And in terms of saying that, I want them to look up to me as a massive role model. Um, look, as I, I don't want my kids looking back and seeing me on TV, partying, uh, freaking jumping cages, hitting other people outside the cage. It's, a, it's, just, it's just not a good role model, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I want to teach him the values of life and how to be humble, you know? No. Go from there. <clears throat> you're doing a great job, man. It's no doubt that you're inspiring people all over the world. You're inspiring the people around you. You know, you, even me, like, I'll, I'll admit it. Like, in the beginning, I didn't think you were going to be golf, Rob. You know that. You know, I told you yeah, that. everyone's a doubter, man. Everyone's yeah. a doubter, bro. Everybody uh, yeah. doubted, but, they, you know, I told you that, hey, I'm going to jump on the train now while I can. You know, before <laughs> the uh, four and five, because everybody was thinking that I was crazy for picking you to win exactly the way you won. That right hand, man. Tell me about the right hand. Come on, tell me. what's. Look, it's, man, going into that fight, it was more... I wanted a TKO. I wanted a sub. I th I knew that he was a heavier guy. Heavier guys are better, better chins than the guys that are in my division. Um, Edwards got a solid chin on him, man. Um, going off his last fight, he went five rounds with Ev, and Ev was just landing big shots on him, and he was coming back, man, to walk through Adrian Pang. I was like, man, this guy's like, he's he's, he's the real deal, you know. He's a world champion for a reason, <coughs> and um. Going into the fight, I didn't, I didn't think that I, I could knock him out. I always had that mental state where I want to knock him out, but I think that's ego talking. So I wanted to go into the fight um, and show more technique in um, like my ground game and just my overall game in general. But um, yeah, him throwing uh, the spinning kick, it was just natural instinct just to step to the left and... I don't know, just throw a right hook and, and land a flush, you know? I was like, oh, man. I, I just, after my eyes opened, I was like, oh, he's falling. Go for another one. I missed that one. And I was like, I didn't realize that he was out. I thought he was like one of those flash knockdowns. Mm -hmm. And I had my fist and I was like, oh, crap, man. That was unnecessary. But, um, I mean, I tried to help him. Um, I tried to take his mouth guard out. I don't know, so he can breathe. And, but, you know, um, Olivier Costa was doing his job, man. And then got the doctor involved and pushed me away which i don't blame him for so yeah that's uh pretty incredible that you guys could put away your friendship you guys are you guys know each other well and then go in there and fight and then even right <laughs> after you knock him out you go in there and try to help him which shows that you are a true martial artist that that is just signifies that right now yeah after you won you have the two belts you're like you're holding them and then you fall to the <laughs> ground right and it, it looked like you got a little bit emotional what were you thinking at that moment I was, man, I was like, it's so surreal, man. Like, I don't, I don't know what to, <clears throat> even now, just rethinking about it, I'm just like, what the hell just happened? Did that just happen? Like, I didn't believe it would happen like that. I knew there was a possibility that it can happen and that I made history. But, um, man, I don't know. I'm still on cloud nine at the moment, man. Fire out. <laughs> yeah. Now, you know, now the dust has settled. <clears throat> What is your plan for 2018? Are you gonna fight again this year? There's still a, you know, a little bit over a month left. Are you gonna fight this year, or is, are you gonna relax? Um, are you gonna enjoy the holidays? Nah, this year I'm gonna relax. Um, but I'll be keeping my weight intact. That's the main issue. Um, that's the main. Not, it's not an issue. Sorry, that's the main goal. Um, huge news coming soon. Mm -hmm. um, I always said to myself, if this fight doesn't happen. <clears throat> I'll be fighting, I'll defend the belt against Shannon Mirachai um, because obviously he's in some title eliminator. Mm -hmm. um, and it's inevitable that one won him to win. So I'll be fighting Shannon Mirachai. Um, if that fight doesn't happen, then I'll be defending the belt against Boku, who mm -hmm. I think is the most deserving. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and, or if that doesn't happen, I'll be like gunning for Bibiano. So... Either way, I always had my my goals set and my my routine set as to who I wanted to fight and who was next lined up. Because I think these days, man, title shots are too easy, uh, too easily given. Mm -hmm. And rematches, man, you only get a rematch if 
the fight went five round and it ends up being a split decision. That's how I think a rematch is only inevitable. Like you can't stop that shit. Um, but, man, coming off a loss and then having one win or, you know, I, th- I think to get a title fight, you have to do, you have to, you have to take the hard route. Me, for me, uh, as an example, I took out prospects, up and comers, um, and I took out a veteran, which eventually got me the title shot against Gafarov. Um, and that's how I think the fight should be done, man. You, you fight three, four fights, and that way, one championship cannot deny you a fight, you know? Um, you win. All right, yeah. You got to work your way up, bro. I guess your experiences in the last year kind of, you know, molded the thought process that you have of who should be fighting you. Since you are on top of the mountain, looking down at everybody, everybody's clawing up at you like, let me get out of, let me get him. But yeah, are, badly, we, are, yeah. we, are, we, are we saying that you're going to have a super fight or are we saying that you're going to defend the title next year? Just give us that. <laughs> Just give us that. Oh, bro. Honestly, I got the biggest news today. Uh, biggest news of my life. Um, look, man, uh, you'll be one of the first people I tell. Trust me. All right. All right. Um, All right. Okay, not at the moment. Not until... Not until 1FC make it official, not until the contracts are out and signed, and that's when I believe that it will happen. But I'm telling you, man, this is massive. Massive. Right. Sounds massive good. for my career anyway. Yeah, of course, man. And, you know, you're already, it's hard to get bigger than you are right now. Unless it's like a triple title. Come on. That's, that's insane, right? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway... Uh, thanks for your time, Martin. Enjoy the holidays. Enjoy your family. I know you're still, you know, you're at work right now. You're doing your thing. Keeping it real. Thanks, man. Thanks, heaps, John, bro. Shout out to Kumate Radio, bro. Thanks, man.